in the previous video we have talked about the limit of complex valued function that is if you have given a function f which is defined from d which is a domain subset of c o domain is also a c and if the point that is z0 is belongs to d where this d contains the sum neighborhood of z0 then if i want to say that f a limit of f is exist at the point x that is equal to z0 for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that 0 less than mod z minus z0 less than epsilon implies mod of f of z minus l less than epsilon where l is also belongs to c then by notation we can say that limit of f of z is l as z tends to z0 now with the help of discussion on the limit we will introduce the now concept of continuity a function f is continuous at point z0 if the three conditions should satisfy the first one is limit of f of z as z tends to z0 is exist second one f of z0 is exists and third one tells you that limit of f of z will be equal to f of z0 as z tends to z0. You should observe the statement 3 is actually contains the statement 1 and statement 2. Since the existence of the quantity on the each side of the equations there is needed the equation 3 can also be stated as for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that mode of z minus z0 less than delta implies mode of f of z minus f of z0 less than epsilon so please notice that here i have not used the deleted neighborhood here i have used the neighborhood of the point z0 and if you want to say a function f is continuous on the region r if it is continuous at each point in r so if you want to say a function is continuous in the region then it has to be a continuous at each point in r and if you want to say the f is discontinuous that means a function is not continuous at the point z0 or I can say a z0 is the point of discontinuity. Now theorems for limit which we have discussed that for the limit we have discussed that the limit of f of z if it is l as z tends to z0 and if your f is of the form u plus iv then the limit of u will be the real part of l if this is l1 plus i l2 then we have seen the result that if and only if limit of u xy as xy tends to x0 y0 will be l1 and limit of v xy tends to x0 y0 will be l2 now with this result we can have one result for continuity it says that if the function f is continuous at point z0 then its real part is also continuous this is a function of two variable and its imaginary part is also a continuous so for that what we can say state is that limit of f of z will be f of z0 as z tends to z0 if and only if limit of u of xy as xy tends to x0 y0 will be u of x0 y0 and limit of v of xy will be v of x0 y0 
as xy tends to x0, y0. So it state that if the function complex valued function is continuous at the point z0, then its real part that is u of xy is also continuous at the point x0, y0 and v which is an imaginary part which is also continuous at a point x0, y0. The second remark we can note here is if f is continuous at z0 then mode of f of z is also continuous at z0. I can also that that f of z bar is also continuous and f of z whole bar is also continuous at the point z0. So this is the remark those who want they can try to prove the, these statements. The third one the, this is also I am making as a remark because the theorem for the limits we already did that sum of two limits is limit of sum. With the help of that we can say that if f and g are continuous at z0 then f plus g f into g that is a product of two continuous functions f upon g provided g is not equal to 0 are continuous at z0. So it says that the sum of two continuous function is continuous, the product of two continuous function is continuous, division of two continuous function is continuous. The fourth remark, I can say that every polynomial that is P of Z, the polynomial you know it is defined as A0 plus A1Z plus A2Z square up to so on An Z power N where An is non-zero. This is known as a polynomial of degree n and this is also continuous function. Here we should note that every constant is a polynomial of degree 0. That means if I define a p of z as a0 then this is a constant function. If a is 0 will be non-zero then degree of this will be 0. But if, if this a0 is 0 then degree is not defined. Keep this is in mind. So let us try to prove that this polynomial function which is continuous for every complex number z. So let us define this w is equal to this. Now let us first thing we can know that limit of z tends to z0 a0 will be a0. That means if this p of z is a0 then it is continuous. Now let us say limit of z tends to z0 a1z. What will be this? you can say it is a1 z0 that can be seen in this manner if a1 is non-zero then for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that mode of a1 z minus a1 z0 which is nothing but the mode of a1 into z0 I want this is less than epsilon but this is already less than delta we have so that's why this is less than mode of a1 into delta. If you want this is less than epsilon then then your delta should be so you have to choose your delta should be less than epsilon by mode of a1. So that means if you can choose this your delta in this manner then we can say that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta which is epsilon less mode a1 such that mode of z minus z0 less than delta implies a1z minus a0 or a1z0 less than epsilon. Therefore, we can say that limit of a1z is equal to a1z0 as z tends to z0. In the similar property we can say that or using the property of product rule that is limit of a n z power n is a 0 z power n we can say as n z tends to z 0 using the product rule we can say that this is also we have because the pro product of two continuous functions continuous so if you have z square here instead of z you can say this is continuous and since each component for this is true for every n so that for 
the sum of two continuous function is continuous and then hence you can say that for every polynomial is a continuous function on entire complex plane. Let's have the another example. Let us define the f of z as e power xy plus i sine of x square minus 2xy cube. We have to show that this function is continuous everywhere in the entire complex plane. So you just notice that what is the real part of this function which is u of xy is e power xy and v of xy is sine of x square minus 2xy cube. The first thing you should notice that this is xy which is a polynomial in terms of x and y and it is exponential function of a polynomial. So that's why the u which is a function of two variable is a continuous function for every point in R square. Same argument I will give for v of xy since this is the polynomial that is x square minus 2xy cube it is a polynomial in terms of x and y and in R2 of two variable every polynomial is a continuous function and sine is a trigonometric function and you know that every trigonometric functions are also continuous function and that's why the real part is continuous and its imaginary part is continuous and as we have seen above that if the real part and imaginary part are continuous then the function is continuous that result we have seen it is Euphian only so that's why this function f is a continuous function over entire complex plane let's have another example f of z is equal to x y square plus 2 x minus y into i here is also u of x y is x y square which is a polynomial in terms of x and y so that's why it is a continuous function so the real part is continuous v of x y will be 2 x minus y which is also continuous function so that's why we can say that this is a function which is a continuous over entire complex plane. So question is determined where the function f of z is equal to z square plus 3i z minus 2 upon z plus i z is not equal to i 5 if z is equal to minus i is continuous. So first of all you should note that this function f of z it, it is of the form h of z upon g of z is a continuous function because this h of z is a polynomial in terms of z and g of z is also a polynomial in terms of z so it is continuous except g of z will be 0 so when g of z is 0 will implies that z plus i is equal to 0 that means z is equal to minus i so at this point the function is not continuous that we don't know we have to investigate that at this point whether the function is continuous or not but except that point the function is continuous now what will happen if the z is equal to minus i so check let us check what is happening the continuity of the function at z is equal to minus check the three condition here the first one whether this limit f of z as z tends to z0 the z0 is here minus i is exist second one is f of z0 is exist yeah so this f of z0 is they have given is 5 so it is exist no problem with that situation third condition is limit of f of z will be f of z0 as z tends to z0 so if you want to prove that whether this function is continuous at the point z is equal to minus i you have to satisfying this three condition let us recall the argument when you are dealing with functions of two variable that means if you have given a function f which is a two variable function if you want to prove that the some limit is not exist then just recall that you are choosing some path so that is a two dimensional case and here it is a point x0 y0 then you know that to prove the limit is does not exist 
you will choose any two different path to traveling to this point so any of the two path you will choose or one path if the answer of the limit is depends on that path then we can say that the limit does not exist if you have forgotten this topic then you may watch my videos on advanced calculus in particularly video on path dependent limits part 2 so just watch that video i will write down in the description the link for that video so those who have forgotten that topic they can watch that video and recall what we were doing there so using that idea i'm choosing the two paths here the path along so here your point z is minus i that means that point will be 0 minus 1 so i'm choosing the path x is equal to 0 and then y is tending to minus 1 so first i'm putting the value z is equal to 0 into the function so what is the function limit z tends to minus 1 f of z the function is limit of z tends to minus 1 z square plus 3iz minus 2 upon z plus i if you substitute now x y instead of z you just write down this is x y as the point converts to 0 minus 1 which is x plus i y square plus 3i x plus i y minus 2 upon x plus i y plus i now you just substitute x is equal to 0 via this path in the limit as putting the limit x is equal to 0 here that is limit y tends to minus 1 i y square plus 3 i into i y minus 2 upon i y plus i that can be simplified as y tends to minus 1 minus y square minus 3y minus 2 upon if i is common out this is y plus two. and this y square plus 3y plus 2 can be factorized at y plus 1 y plus 2 so that's why we'll have this is y tends to minus 1 y plus 2 y plus 1 upon i y plus 1 minus so this will be gives you y tends to minus 1 minus of y plus 2 upon i so that will gives you minus 1 into minus 1 plus 2 that is 1 upon i finally you will have is minus 1 upon i so that i can write as i square upon i which is i so that means limit z tends to z0 f of z will be i but what is f of z 0 is given to you it is 5 so via this path that is x is equal to 0 y tends to minus 1 you will have this answer minus i so after considering this one path we have this possibility of this limit will be i which is never equal to 5 so that means we can say that so what we can say is limit of f of z as z tends to z0 see please keep in mind that i have not calculated here the limit what is the limit is but via one path i have calculated which is i and from that we can conclude that this i will never equal to 5 so we can say that this condition is not satisfying whether this limit is exist or not that is the second question but right now via this path this if it is exist then these two things are not same so that's why the third condition is not satisfying so we can say that f is not continuous at z is equal to minus i so with this complete the proof of this example let's have the next result that is a proposition we can say it says that the composition of a two continuous function is continuous. That means so that composition of continuous function is continuous. So let us give the proof for this statement. So let f of z 
be a continuous function at point z is equal to z0 and f of z is defined in the neighborhood of z0 and g of z is a function which is defined on f image whatever the f image of the neighbor of his neighborhood so that is the situation we have that f is a function which define from f to f of z and there is another function g which is defined from f to some whatever the range of f or image of the f is there from that to some g of z so this is the function f and this will be the function g so that's why g o f is defined well defined now let us assume that g is continuous at point w0 which is f of z0 and f is continuous at the point z0 so let us assume g is continuous at w equal to f of z0 we already have assumed that f is continuous at the point z0 so since g is continuous at the point w0 what we can say is for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 here we are not we will better to use instead of delta we will use the some another notation that say gamma such that g of w minus g of w0 less than epsilon when w minus w0 less than gamma where what is this w where w is f of z and w0 we already mentioned it is f of z0 also given that or we have assumed that f is continuous at point z0 so what we can say there exists a delta greater than 0 f of z minus f of z0 less than epsilon whenever mode of z minus z0 less than delta now we'll choose this epsilon is anything for every epsilon this statement is true so i'm choosing epsilon is equal to gamma so if i choose epsilon is equal to gamma due to this statement one what we have the statement one says that this f of z minus f of z zero is less than gamma which is epsilon so using this statement one and statement two we can say that g of f of z minus g of f of z zero is less than epsilon when mode of z minus z zero less than delta. that means this will implies when this is implies that will implies when this is there so we can say finally that composition of a two continuous function is continuous now the next result is very interesting let us state the result in this manner if function f of z is continuous at point z0 and f of z0 is non-zero then there exists a neighborhood of z0 in which f of z is non-zero first of all you pause the video and try to understand what is this theorem says if you can see this result for real line suppose you have a function g which is from some a to r where a is a subset of r and if you have given at some point g of z0 will be non-zero so i'm talking about suppose this point is there z0 and g of z0 is non-zero is there so that means this point is somewhere here this is the image of this point g of z0 it is non-zero that means it's not intersecting the x-axis it is above the x-axis so this result tells you that there exists some neighborhood of this point that is x0 minus delta to x0 plus delta there exists some neighborhood of this point z0 if the function g is continuous then on this neighborhood the function is non-zero that means g of x is non-zero in this neighborhood for every x belongs to x minus delta to x0 plus delta 
that means there is no chances that this function will come up and it will go down or it is as this situation but there exists some point where the function has to be non zero either in this situation or if it is a straight then also it is the non zero points are there in that point and the same idea you can carry for complex valued function so this result tells you that if you have a function which is continuous and which is non zero at one point then there are infinitely many points on which the function is non zero so let us try to give the proof of this statement given that f is continuous at point z zero so for every epsilon greater than zero there exists a delta greater than zero such that mode of f of z minus f of z zero less than epsilon when mode of z minus z zero less than delta given that f of z zero is non zero this is also given so that means mode of f of z zero is also non zero we have to prove that f of z is non zero for some neighborhood of z zero this is our objective to prove so let us go via contradiction that what will be the contradiction of that statement the contradiction of that statement is f of z is equal to 0 for every neighborhood of z0 so for every neighborhood of z0 f of z is 0 that we can say but if this is the statement then what will be the statement one says because this is this is also neighborhood of z0 that is z minus z0 less than delta so for this neighborhood what you will have is since f of z is 0 for every neighborhood so in this neighborhood is also it has a zero value so it is 0 minus f of z less than epsilon when mode of z minus z0 less than delta but this statement one is true for every epsilon greater than 0 so i'm taking epsilon as taking epsilon as mode of f of z 0 upon 2 which is non zero which is strictly greater than 0 so we'll have mode of f of z 0 is less than mode of f of z 0 by 2 that means 1 is less than 1 by 2 which is a contradiction so that means this statement is not true due to we have assumed that for every neighborhood f of z is 0 so that means there is a, at least one neighborhood of the point z0 where the function is non zero with this we'll move forward we will use this result when we are discussing new topic that is called conformal mapping we'll use this result there next property is about the boundedness of a continuous function so if you have a function f is continuous on a bounded and closed subset s which is a subset of c then prove that minimum and maximum of mode z is exist on s this result is actually based on a real variable function because mode of f of z is a real valued function so if f of z is u of xy plus iv of xy then what will be the mode of z the mode of z is under root of u of xy square plus v of xy square since this is a real valued function which is defined on closed and bounded set in real calculus we say that this function attains its bound that means its maximum and minimum are in the set so actually we are using the result of real calculus that is real variable calculus that says that if you have a function f is continuous on closed and bounded set then it's always attained its bound that means the maximum of that function and the minimum of that function should attained by the set s with that note i am giving you couple of example as an exercise to do yourself the first x exercise i am giving you is prove that e power z is continuous so this is the first one prove that 
this is continuous second one so that f of z is equal to cube 1 plus i minus y cube 1 minus i upon x square plus y square as z is not equal to 0 0 if z is equal to 0 is continuous at point 0 so with this two example let us recall what we have did in this lecture we have defined a continuous function for complex valued function if you want to say a function is continuous then it has to be satisfied three conditions the first one is a limit of the function at that point is exist at that point function has a value and the limit and the function value at that point has to be equal so another way to express that definition that is epsilon delta definition for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta such that mode of z minus z 0 less than delta implies mode of f of z minus f of z 0 less than epsilon this is the another way to look at how the definition then we have discussed some results of continuity with the help of results we have discussed for the limit the first result is if f is continuous then it's a real part which is a function of two variable and its imaginary part also a function of two variable both of them are continuous and vice versa if the real part is continuous imaginary part is continuous then f is continuous we have seen that the product of two continuous function is continuous sum of two continuous function is continuous the division of two continuous function is continuous we have seen couple of examples for for example every polynomial function is continuous then we have solved some examples where we have shown the function and how to prove the function is not continuous we have seen that composition of two continuous function is continuous and also we have seen very important results that that a function is non-zero at one point and and a function is continuous then there exists a neighborhood in which the function is non-zero with this i'm stopping here if you like this video please press the like button if you have any comment suggestion or a question i'm happy to give answer to them see you in next video bye bye sayonara